So methanotrophy is the metabolism where a certain group of bacteria use methane as their sole source of carbon and energy. So this is how we typically grow um, the methanotrophs. As you can see, the agar plate, bacteria can grow on the surface of there and within this sealed jar there is uh, methane and air mix and so they assimilate the methane with the air and then they can use that as a source to grow and a uh, source of energy. Methane uh, is flammable and it's explosive, so the mixture of methane and air, it can be dangerous, so you've got to be careful when you're using it. Obviously, safety is the most essential part about working with bacteria. From Methanotrophs, one of the products that we're aiming to create is isobutanol, which can easily be merged and blended with petrol and can be used in a standard combustion engine in a car. So these are all methanotrophs. Methanotroph generally describes the term as a uh, methane eater. There are many sources of methane that uh, can be controlled due to you know, human influence as a waste gas, as a greenhouse gas. To make a technology that can consume and convert into something less damaging and more useful has both benefits to the environment it also has economic benefits. So starting off with isolate one, this belongs to the Methylocystis genus. Genus is kind of like a, a grouping bacteria and they all share similar characteristics. This was isolated from Wallaton Park Lake, not too far from here. So this was from lake sediment. This is isolate three. And yeah, this was isolated from University Lake. Then you have isolate six here. This was also isolated from the University Lake. Isolate 10, so instead of these three were from the, all from the Methylocystis genus, this is from uh, the Methylocaldum genus. And this was isolated from cow manure, <laughs> lots of fun sampling. Again, we've got isolate 12 here. This also belongs to the same genus as these three. And this was actually isolated from Moseley bog. And then finally here, we've got isolate 14. This is a quite interesting organism that was isolated from the Roman baths. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting taking a variety of samples, because not only do you get um, a variety of different organisms in different places, they also have different characteristics. The Roman bath is an interesting example because there was a very interesting species isolated from the Roman bath uh, a long time ago, Methylococcus capsulatus, and we managed to isolate a very similar organism. This is that strain, and this is the one that we isolated. What we did is we sequenced a certain region on the genome that all the bacteria share. And then what you can do is you can align this sequence to pre-existing sequences and then that can tell you how similar it is to that organism. And the results we got back from this were they were identical. So that suggests that we managed to re-isolate effectively the exact same organism 50, 60 years down the line. And so now we can try and characterise what is different between the organism at that point and the organism now. You know, that's kind of like the, the crux of the uh, scientific methodology that you can r repeat an experiment uh, using all the same conditions and you'll get the same result out, which is what we've done here. Obviously when you first start out and you look at the project and you're deciding what you want to do and what topic areas interest you, you look at the whole big picture and it is really interesting. But then when you've been doing your project for one or two years, then it becomes a bit more concentrated and you become a bit more, uh, you know, become a bit more knowledgeable on more of the small tasks that involve you making these incremental progress all the way to the, the big goal at the end. Okay, so transferring DNA into these methanotropes. This has had DNA conjugated into it from E. coli, which is the yellow fluorescent protein, and this one doesn't. One difference you can see is that there's better growth on the one without yellow fluorescent protein. This is because basically it's making something that it doesn't normally make. So there's a bit more of a burden in having to make this protein. So it grows a bit slower. But to actually visualize this fluorescence, you need to expose the fluorescent protein to a certain wavelength of light. So this emits blue light. Uh, this will excite the, pro the yellow fluorescent protein and it will emit a fluorescent light that you can see with your eyes. You can clearly see this fluorescent protein that is being expressed by the bacteria. When you compare them side by side, you can see the normal isolate, which has uh, no added DNA to it, which isn't fluorescing very much. And the this exact same species, the exact same bacteria, has had a gene added into it, which is the yellow fluorescent protein. Now, the significance of this is you need to be able to extend the metabolism of a bacteria to be able to make it produce a fuel source. You need to be able to add the gene in. And this is a good example, or at least a visual example, 
of how uh, DNA that's not the bacteria's own can be added in and can be functional within the bacteria.